Greetings from this side once again. Pleasure to present Chemistry 2021, Paper 2, Number 7. The very last question in that paper came from the topic Electrochemistry. We always advise our students that some topics rarely miss, this being one of them. So electrochemistry, if you check, has been around almost every other time KCSE exams are being uh, done. So we want to welcome you to question number seven, and we see how best a student was supposed to have sailed through the question. So part A, using oxidation numbers of chlorine, explain why the following is a redox reaction. So we have this compound here reacting with the hydrochloric acid to form chlorine and water. So we are being told that using oxidation numbers of chlorine only. So you can see chlorine is here, chlorine is here and chlorine is here. There is a video that we did and uh, in the comment section somebody asked how do we get the oxidation numbers? We actually replied to the comment using a very long message in which we explained what oxidation numbers are and how they are calculated. So I want to direct you to that video in the description of this video so that you can at least uh, have a look at what oxidation numbers are and how they are calculated. But for now, we can go ahead and answer the question as asked. So, we explained earlier that oxidation number of hydrogen is normally fixed at positive one. Hydrogen is here only one time. Oxygen normally has a fixed oxidation number as well of minus two, as explained in the link, but there are three, okay? So the total charge for oxygen here is going to be minus six. And then for hydrogen, we have plus one. So the whole compound as it is has no charge at all. So what happens, we are going to look for the net charge of hydrogen and oxygen. This gives us positive one minus six, that is minus five, correct? So it means therefore that chlorine has to uh, kind of cancel out the negative charges here by having an apparent charge of positive five. So in short, that is how oxidation numbers are calculated. Moving on to HCl, this uh, hydrogen here will contribute a charge, an apparent charge, sorry, of positive one then chlorine would cancel that out by having a charge of minus one. So let me circle those of chlorine so that we don't confuse. Here oxidation number of chlorine is positive five, here it is negative one. And again, the balancing figure here is not used when we are calculating oxidation numbers. Now, for this chlorine, it is uncombined. It has not reacted with any other element, so for uncombined elements, oxidation numbers are normally zero, right? So with those three, we can go ahead and answer our question. So looking at uh, chlorine, a student was supposed to say, I'll use uh, ON to represent oxidation number because of space. So oxidation number of chlorine in this compound of ours, okay, is reduced. It has been reduced from positive five to zero. You can see here. So when oxidation number has been reduced, like the case here, we say that the compound has been reduced. 
So a student was supposed to have written this as the first part of the answer, having calculated the oxidation number. So we would give you a half for the two and reduction, the word reduction, another half for one mark. And then you continue for the other part, this one involving aldochloric acid. So oxidation number of chlorine in HCl now, what has happened is increased. It has it been increased from negative one to zero. You can see here. And what is this? Increase in oxidation number is what? Oxidation. So in this case, you can see reduction and oxidation took place at the same time. And that is what we mean by redox. Understood? So moving on to part B, we have what we call standard reduction potentials. They are also called standard electrode potentials. We obtain these when we connect our half cells to the hydrogen half cell. Then we read the voltmeter readings as indicated here. So we are going to use the standard potentials to answer the questions that follow. I will always refer to them as we give the answers. So uh, the first question is giving us that, is telling us that the half cell one and two, here they are, are combined to form an electrochemical cell. Write an equation for the cell reaction. So these are very unfamiliar reactions. They are normally not the ones we used to teach. So for us to answer this question, allow me to introduce familiar standard reduction potentials, which we normally use in class. So here we are. Uh, these potentials, the way we use them to teach is that uh, they can be arranged from the most positive to the most negative with our hydrogen half cell having zero volts here to mean it is the reference electrode. So we always use these standard electrode potentials for three things. Number one is to actually uh, compare reducing and oxidizing properties of elements. And uh, the one with the most positive is the weakest reducing agent, but strongest oxidizing agent. The one with the most negative is the strongest reducing agent, but the weakest oxidizing agent. So, uh, if you are given any two of them, one will have to go, will, one will have to undergo oxidation, and the other one will have to undergo reduction. But the way they are arranged here, it is like all of them are being reduced. Remember, acceptance of electrons, as indicated here, means all these are being reduced. But in reality, if you combine any two to form a complete cell, one half cell will have to undergo oxidation, and another one will have to undergo reduction. So, uh, suppose we combined zinc with the ion, ion 2 for example, and then somebody has asked us to write the overall equation for the reaction. What do we do? I'll explain using these familiar ones so that we get back to answering our question in the KCSE of 2021. So these are our two half cells which we have to combine to form a complete electrochemical cell. If we are asked to write the overall equation, what do we do? So the first thing you check is which of these two half cells will undergo oxidation? And for you to be helped, we had given a tagline when we revised electrochemistry some few uh, months ago, and we said, a student should just remember this, most positive, the element with the most positive E0 is the stronger oxidizing agent. 
It is the strong oxidizing agent of the two given. Now, what happens to an oxidizing agent? It gets reduced. Okay? Where does reduction take place? Cathode. Okay? And cathode is normally put on the right-hand side of an electrochemical cell. This should be the tagline for any student who wants to excel more in this topic. Just remember this. Now, moving now to our two half cells that we want to use to explain how to get overall equation. With these two, we need to know which one would get oxidized. So between these two, which one has the most positive E naught? This one here. Remember they are negatives. So the smaller the negative, the most positive it is. So ion 2 would be the most positive. It is therefore our strongest oxidizing agent. It will therefore get reduced. So ion 2 would get reduced according to our tagline. And then zinc would get oxidized. I hope you have followed why we are doing that. Now, for us to write the overall equation, for us to write the overall equation for the two familiar uh, half reactions, we will rewrite these the way they are in our, uh, in our list. So here we are for ion 2. And uh, the E naught is negative 0 0.44 V. Then this is reduction the way we have agreed here. But for zinc, it is being oxidized. But if you look at the way it has been written here, it is as if it has been reduced. So a student is now supposed to reverse the way this thing is written here so that we mean oxidation. We mean loss of electrons because oxidation is loss of electrons. So for zinc, the way it is here, it has been reduced, which is not the case. It should be oxidized. So we are supposed to reverse so it means we will now start with the zinc solid and giving us zinc ions, aqueous, and two electrons. This way it has been oxidized because it has lost electrons. Now when you reverse, this sign will also change from negative 0 0.76 to now positive 0 0.76. Then what do we do? We add the two to get the overall equation. So obviously the two electrons will cancel. This side we have ion two ions, aqueous, reacting with zinc solid to give this side ion solid and zinc ion, aqueous. This now become your overall equation. And of course, the E cell, the electromotive force for the cell would also be gotten by adding the two. So negative 0 0.44 plus 0 0.76, you get positive 0 0.32 volts. This would now be the value that you will read in the voltmeter. I believe this has sorted out our issue. So let us go back to the question and now answer. So in our question we have been told to write an equation for the cell reaction. We have one and two. Now before we write it as we have just explained which one are we going to oxidize and which one are we going to reduce. So this one here will be reduced right because it is the most positive. So this one will undergo reduction. Then this one will undergo oxidation. But from the way they are written here, it is it's like all of them have been reduced. So we have to reverse or change the order of this to mean oxidation. So for our cell one, we shall now start writing from here. Lead, solid, from here. Sulfate, aqueous, to give us lead sulfate, 
solid and two electrons. We have now written this as having been oxidized and we are being guided by the E naught here. Of course, our volts will now change to positive, having reversed the order. The second one we do not have to reverse because already it is gaining electrons, meaning it is undergoing reduction. This other one is now being oxidized by loss of electrons. So we copy this again down here. Lead, this solid, sulfate, aqueous, four hydrogen ions, aqueous, two electrons, and then I get lead sulfate, solid, and two water, liquid. Now, having done this, the two electrons will now go, and I add, I add my two equations. I'll have, I should have obtained uh, my net ionic equation. So let's start here. We will have lead solid, move here, lead solid, here we have two, two sulfate ions, aqueous, and then I have four hydrogen ions, aqueous, and then this side, I will have two of lead sulfate, this and this, solid, and two water. So this would be your net equation for the cell when you combine one and two. I hope we have explained it in the best way we could and therefore any student would be able to follow next time you are asked to write an overall equation. Remember one has to be reversed, the one that undergoes oxidation and then you add the two. Now calculate the EMF of the cell. E cell is normally given by a very simple equation. This is E reduced minus E oxidized. Okay? So reduced is a positive 1.69. From it we subtract oxidized 0 0.36. And if you have a good calculator, you'd have positive 2.05. And of course, we ignore the units because already specified in the table as volts, but if you added volts, no big deal. So here, half a mark, answer half a mark. Good, moving on to page two. We have been asked to now draw a label diagram for the electrochemical cell formed using half cell three and four. So here, our half cell 3 is ion 3 and half cell 4 is zinc. Okay? So, uh, in chemistry, we insist the half cell that has undergone oxidation should always be on the left hand side. This is the one you start with. So for our case, zinc would be the half cell we draw, followed by ion 3 and uh, we shall put in a salt bridge in between. But before we draw, I want you to take note that ion 3 is being reduced to ion 2. So with that, let us draw our complete cell, which is made when you combine a half cell 3 and 4. So here, we shall draw two, maybe beakers, each is called half cell. When you are drawing, please uh, make your diagram be workable, avoid uh, broken lines. So maybe I start with a salt bridge. I believe you know what a salt bridge is. Salt bridge. So this is my salt bridge. Then let me put in my electrolytes. Let me put in my electrodes. Electrodes are 
the metallic rods or uh, the rods made of uh, graphite or platinum through which electrons either leave or uh, enter an electrolyte then I have my voltmeter there so that would be my cell I have to label now on the left we have a grid it has to be the one that undergoes oxidation so I'll have zinc electrode and here I will have zinc ions any soluble salt of zinc would do now where there is a lot of controversy is this side so here the allowable electrolyte should contain ion 3 ions because this is what half cell 3 has but when we reduce ion 3 ions there will be some ion 2 ions in solution as well so if you labeled ion 2 being here and ion 3 there will be no question but you are electrolyte your electrode sorry had to be platinum not iron I'll explain in a moment but first let us see how the three marks would be allowed or would be uh, awarded for zinc half for zinc ions half for ion 3 half ion 3 not ion 2 ion 3 half for platinum half and then the remaining half would go for workability if you are electrode here was iron like most students would put iron you get zero for the platinum and zero for workability so that means you'd only get two marks so let me explain why we use platinum and not iron rod number one we can understand this better if we look at the observations what observations are we going to make as this half cell works for some time? There are going to be two. One, this zinc, zinc electrode is supposed to undergo oxidation, which means that the rod is going to wear out because zinc will be losing electrons to get to zinc ions. So this electrode is expected to be thinner and thinner and thinner. Then on this one, we expect gray deposits. I don't know the color of iron. Is it gray? I hope so. We expect gray deposits of iron metal. Right? So let's assume you put in iron metal here. Instead of having deposits of iron, the iron itself would be oxidized to ion 2 and that would contradict our observations so when you have such a situation where we are not clear we are not clear which ion is where then we can always think of an inert electrode if you put in ion here I've explained probably it would be oxidized to ion 2 and that would jeopardize our expected observations and that is why the examiner uh, actually uh, insisted on a student putting an inert electrode here platinum or titanium or any other uh, inert electrode that you know not the rod of the ion that is present here I believe we are now okay as far as drawing of that electrochemical cell is concerned moving on uh, explain okay state and explain the observations made when a few drops of acidified potassium manganate 7 are added to hydrogen peroxide now both are oxidizing agents but Potassium manganate 7 is a stronger oxidizing agent. So it would oxidize hydrogen peroxide and it's self-reduced. So if a student understood it from that point, uh, it would be easier to answer this question. Now, when you oxidize hydrogen peroxide, what do you get? You get uh, water and oxygen. And of course, when you reduce acidified potassium manganate 7, you get manganese 2 ions, which are colorless. So we expected two 
uh, observations and two explanations to score three marks. Number one, acidified, uh, let me use symbols, potassium manganate seven is decolorized, decolorized, or somebody would say changes from purple to colorless. Okay? This would give you man mark, and then you continue to write that manganate ions. Manganate ions is reduced. It's reduced to manganese two ions for the next half a mark. Now, now each, each was one and a half, so this is one for the observation and the explanation, a half. Then you don't stop here. What about hydrogen peroxide? Because we are producing oxygen, there would be effervescence, effervescence, or bubbles of a colorless gas. Bubbles of a colorless gas. So please, when you are writing an observation, it is what your eyes can see. Many students were writing uh, um, colorless gas produced that relates a glowing splint. We cannot see that. We can't see that, my friends. We can only see bubbles. Eh? So this one would be fizzing as well or fizzling was also allowed, or even fizzing, okay? And then you, this is one mark, sorry, one mark, and then you explain that um, hydrogen peroxide is oxidized, is oxidized to oxygen. That is why there is effervescence. So three marks in total for the two observations and their uh, explanations. Coating iron, the last question, coating iron with zinc is a more effective way of corrosion prevention than coating it with copper. Explain. The answer is very simple. Zinc is more reactive than iron. That is one mark. Don't explain a lot. This is a science. We need straight to the point answers. And then copper is less reactive than iron. You get your two marks and pass chemistry. With that, we have come to the end of our video where we have reviewed yet again a topic that never misses, and this is electrochemistry. Thank you for being with us. All the best.